In this video, I'm gonna share with you why I feel most hiring managers have it wrong when it comes to hiring top talent. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff. Welcome back to the channel, and hopefully you had a great holiday weekend. If you're in the United States, it's actually Labor Day weekend, and what that means is that you're supposed to be taking time off from work in order to enjoy the fruits of your labor, at least that's what I think it's supposed to mean. However, uh, in my case, I actually spent most of my weekend working. Um, I actually had a four-day weekend, and we used it to really catch up on all the uh, tons of projects around the house, did a lot of painting, um, did a lot of um, organizing and trying to get unpacked, just haven't really had a whole lot of opportunity to do that. And for whatever reason, this has been a particularly brutal move. Uh, I've, I've actually moved 13 times in 20 years, just was kind of adding it up the other day. And um, we're totally tired of moving. So I think that this is going to be our last move for at least for the very long foreseeable future. Um, so spent a lot of my time on Labor Day actually laboring away, but um, hopefully had more of a relaxing time than I did. I also got a chance to, I don't know if you can see my shirt, but... I have to celebrate the Penn State Nittany Lions, uh, my alma mater. So my Nittany Lions had a huge win over the Wisconsin Badgers this past weekend and super excited about that. So I didn't work all weekend. I actually did take some time to, to check that out. So this weekend I've actually been thinking um, about some concepts that I wanted to speak about. This is actually something that I've been thinking about for quite a while, this particular concept. Uh, and it's something that I deal with as a recruiter pretty frequently. Um, and it's one, I would say it's one of the more frustrating things that I do deal with in my interactions with hiring managers. And it is something that I feel like hiring managers are getting wrong pretty consistently. And it's, it's uh, typically in a hiring process. Usually what happens is the first step is a hiring manager will come to me and they'll say, hey, I've got this new position open and we set up an intake call. And so in the intake call, basically what that is, is we walk through each aspect of the the position, what it is that they're looking for, what makes that candidate successful, um, essentially the ideal candidate profiles, what comes out of that. So I, I use that to then go off and recruit candidates and try to give them a slate of people uh, in order to interview and make the best possible decisions. And usually in that intake call, and this is a particularly true for more advanced positions. So a position that's not entry level, usually it's a position that's maybe two or three um, jobs past entry level um, that this usually happens in the hiring manager will come back and say I really want somebody that has done this type of work for at least five to seven years and I'm just kind of using that as an example it could be higher it could be lower depending on the position but they essentially want to see that and generally speaking I will also hear we want to hire a rock star or we want to hire somebody that's got future growth potential and somebody or somebody that could grow into the role um, or it could grow into a bigger role. And that's where it gets kind of frustrating because essentially what they're asking for is somebody who has already done the position, has been doing it for several years, and is considered to be a high potential or somebody that is a quote unquote rock star. And the thing is about rock stars, they're not looking for a lateral position because essentially what that is, is you're asking a candidate to make a lateral into a new position that is essentially exactly what they're already doing. Now, in a lot of cases, the candidate who is considered high potential is moving to a new company. They're usually doing it for a promotional opportunity. They're not usually just going laterally because it doesn't fit into a long-term career strategy. But the hiring manager is looking for somebody that can hit the ground running and it essentially already has several years of experience demonstrating the exact position that they're hiring for. So... There is an inherent disconnect between those two things. And as a recruiter, it's frustrating because there are times where I will talk to a candidate and I'll know almost instantly like, hey, this person just has that it factor or whatever you wanna call it. And I will then present that person to the hiring manager and tell them, listen, this candidate is, does, not have, does not have the experience in that particular position. In other words, they haven't done the job that you're currently asking for but they are going to be doing this job and then going beyond this job. But you, you can just tell that this person is on a strong career path and has that it factor. And in almost every case in my recruiting career, the hiring manager is very reluctant 
to make that a decision to hire a candidate that hasn't demonstrated the type of work that they're doing. So then they go off and they hire somebody that's already been doing the job for quite a while. Um, they end up getting just, I would say it's probably an average candidate. Maybe they're okay, but generally speaking, kind of an average candidate. And then I see this rockstar candidate that I interviewed is progressing through a new company through their career, kind of moving, moving their way up the ranks. And then I kind of just shake my head and I go, well, it's like we had an opportunity to draft that person and uh, we didn't do it because we were too scared um, that they couldn't demonstrate that type of work, especially when the competencies for the positions are pretty similar. Maybe it's just a little bit of a stretcher. It, maybe they have one or two years of experience and we're moving into a, so we're looking for a senior role and they're, uh, they're more junior. And it's like, well, they've shown that they can do the job that, uh, at least on a more junior level, but maybe they just haven't done it to that five to seven year mark. So then you kind of come up and say, well, they don't have enough experience. Well, what if that person is amazing at what they're doing and is going to be bypassing this position pretty quickly because they're going to be moving up and up and up. There's just certain people that have that moxie to them. From a recruiter's perspective, it's really frustrating because I see these candidates and there's really nothing I can do to convince a hiring manager to take, you know, take a risk on them. And that's essentially what the hiring manager is looking at it as it, it is, it is a risk to them because they're being graded on their own job and who they hire for their teams. And if they hire the wrong person, then it could reflect very poorly on them and they may not be able to correct it. They're going to have to live with that hiring decision. So a lot of hiring managers are very reluctant and to make decisions, especially stretch decisions um, because of that. And it's a shame because they lose out. So that got me thinking more about this concept of years of experience and demonstrated work history and why that isn't necessarily the best indicator of the best potential hire that we can make. There was an article that I read and it came from, this is probably going back 15 years now, and it was from a tech startup CEO. So it was a long time. I don't know if the tech startup is still around, but the Essentially what they did, uh, there was an article that they talked about their hiring strategy or their hiring philosophy. And the hiring manager said, I don't care about their educational background, their, their, um, where they've worked, all that, that kind of stuff. He said, there's really two major qualifications that a candidate has to have in order to get hired at our company. The first one is they have to be smart. The second one is they have to get things done. So those are the two criteria that they assessed against in all of their, and, and the article is really lengthy. It talks about how they actually go through the interviewing process. And if I wish I could find it, it's probably buried in the World Wide web at this point, but it was a really interesting read because it focused on your competency and your ability to do the job versus what you've already demonstrated in the past, which is kind of a different take on, we mostly operate from the premise of this behavior-based interviewing is the past performance is the best indicator of future performance. And, you know, I agree to that to a certain extent, but that doesn't allow us to take a risk on a candidate who is an up and comer and we're missing out on some of the best talent. So again, are they smart? And do they get things done? And if you apply that criteria to just about anything that you're assessing somebody on, then it really starts to paint a different picture of the type of candidate that you're actually interviewing. So if you're a hiring manager, take a look at it from that angle. Are they smart? Do they get things done? Who knows? Maybe you won't be passing by that superstar candidate who just needs the opportunity to prove that they can do the job. But if you're in a situation where you're trying to get an employer to notice you and it feels like it's a bit of a stretch for you in the position that you're applying to, I know how frustrating that can be. But I do have a website called lifeafterlayoff.com. It's loaded with tips and tricks, all from an insider's perspective on how to position yourself to be the best possible candidate for that position. Now, we still have to get by that employer bias, but there are ways that you can position yourself to be the best possible candidate. And I do have a couple of training courses that you should check out, Resume Rocket Fuel and the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp if you need more help on your job search. So if you're a hiring manager and you're listening to this, Maybe take a look at, are they smart and do they get things done? Because you might find a candidate that you wouldn't have considered before. And if you like this video, appreciate a thumbs up and maybe hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future posts. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.